Now, you might think, this is not that tricky. You're right, I'm trying to ease you into this. I want you to remember the very first, um, sorry, I'll take that back. The second example that we did yesterday was this guy. You don't need to write this down. This is the um, second example we did. We did 10, 10x equals 1, and then we did this one, okay? Now, what was the angle that you came up with that fit with this? Do you remember? Pi on 3 this time, right? Again, in fact, I have the, um, I have the same triangle up there, so I want adjacent on hypotenuse. So pi on 3 will do it for me, okay? Now, I'm going to rewrite this line to show you where that comes in. You chose pi on 3 because cos of pi on 3 is a half, yeah? Like, that's the same thing, cos inverse of that. So I can write this right hand side like so. Do you agree with that? Cos of pi on 3 is a half. So when you see cos of something, cos of something else, right? How will we use the inverse trig ratios here to help us write out the answer for this? What am I going to do when I start off with x equals? Start me off with quoting the beginning of the general solution form. It's 2 and prime. <coughs> You told plus me before it's plus or minus. Okay, now what usually would we have here, right? We would usually write cos inverse or inverse cos of whatever that thing is, right? Of that thing. And oh, here's the just, thing. Just think, uh, alpha. Alpha. In this domain, right, if I'm saying alpha is between, what's the domain that I'm interested in for cos inverse? Not to pi. Not to pi? Very good. If alpha has a restriction on it, if it's at least smaller than an obtuse angle, a straight angle, then therefore cos inverse of cos alpha is just going to hand me back alpha, right? So I can just go ahead and say here x is equal to, provided that I have this restriction on alpha. So I'm going to write that down. Do just as a little note, had I written this same question all with sines instead of cosines, um, it would be very similar to have the different general solution, but there will be something different about the domain, right? It won't be from 0 to pi, what would it be? Minus pi on 2. Yeah, negative pi on 2 to pi on 2. Because that's the domain, I should say, that's the range of sine inverse. So this here comes from this guy. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's pretty pedestrian, that's not complicated. But once you know this and once you see it, you can use this in all kinds of different ways. Write another example with me. This is going to get a little bit stickier. Now, for starters, and again, you don't have to write this down, but this is put, is put to you in sort of the nicest, neatest way possible, okay? Just like you saw before, cos something, you could cos something. You can just go straight into the cosine general solution. Here I've got sine something equals sine of something else. Hmm. Now, this is nicely put. I could make this a little bit harder, only a little bit, by just rewriting it like this. You don't need to write this down, you know? But I just write it like that, number one, to show you, okay, if I see that first line, where am I going to go? Where, where does my sort of, my algebra trigonometry intuition lead me? It makes me cry, but I've seen students do this. I know what to do with that. I can factorize, okay? Sine's not a multiple, it's a, it's a function, right? So what might someone do if they didn't do the next line? What could you do with that red line? What options do you have? Yeah. You go for T formula. If you had a real idea to cause yourself some pain, you could. Okay. Um, you should make. You could make a substitution and go ahead. Another suggestion, Jitsu. Oh, that's equal to uh, sine three x plus two x minus sine three x minus two x. Okay. So another way of seeing this is: look at these two angles here. They don't. They don't speak a language that I want. There's no. I mean, if you were dealing with fractions, you'd say they're common denominator. I need to get some sort of common denominator. So in trig terms, what I could do is I could say, and it's very, very clever. Oh, thanks, keep thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I said it's very clever. Um, I, uh, <laughs> that was uncalled for. Okay, I could say 5x, of course, is 3x plus 2x. And the great thing about 3x and 2x is you can use those same two pieces to get this angle here. Do you see that? This oh. is 3x take away. 2x. Now, that's nice, but why is it useful? What can I do following this? What would you do next? I can use my trig expansions, right? Yeah. Um, this is going to be, this guy will be sine 3x cos 2x plus cos 3x sine 2x. This part. And then when you do this guy, there's going to be a conjugate. It's going to cancel. That'll be nice. Okay. 
So then you can go ahead and solve. That's path number one. But I'm going to try and, by the way, you can go ahead and try and find that solution later on. I'm going to try and go with this using this. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to treat it just like my other general solutions. And I'm going to say, this thing here, which I'm used to seeing an x or a theta or an alpha or whatever there. In this case, it's 5x. So I'm solving for 5x right now. Okay. What's the general solution for sine? It's the last one we did. And pi. And pi. Plus. 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 Yep. Now, I can pause for a second. I have a general solution. But I kind of want to push on this a little bit more. Because I see there are x's on the left-hand side. There are x's on the right. I could just divide through by 5 and go home. But it'd be a little bit weird to have x's in both spots. Okay. At the moment, it's difficult to try and get those two together. Why is it difficult to combine them in any way? Because there's an addition as well. Yeah. So yeah, this guy here, for all its brilliance of taking two different parts of the equation and boiling them into one, it makes simplifying it very complicated. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. We need a new line. I'm going to take this and I'm going to break it back apart into those two um, versions that we had before. Okay? So this is why when we're deriving the general solution for sine, you need to see that there are two bits that turn into this. Okay? So here's my, um, my working. You can continue right along on your page. But really, I've got two parts of this. Right? Do you remember I've got the even multiples of pi, and then I've got the odd multiples of pi. Do you remember that? So let's deal with them one at a time. I've got 5x equals... Let's do the even side first, right? When I put even numbers into here, what happens to this negative one to the end? It becomes one. It just becomes one. So this acts as a plus, right? So I can say 2n pi plus whatever the angle was, which in this case is x. Okay. Now, you can see immediately, I can do some simplification at this point, right? I can. I will in a minute. Once I get both of my cases out of the way, okay? This is the even case. Let's do the odd case. How would I write it? How can we write the odd case? Uh, there's a couple of different ways you do it, right? Um, the way I think we summarized it was if 2n is every even number, then 2n plus 1 is every odd number. As we established before, you could just as equally say 2n minus 1. That would be fine. But... Uh, I'm just going to go with this because I like plus signs, right? So there's all the odd numbers. There's all the odd multiples of pi. From the even ones, we go forward. From the odd ones, we go backwards. So this should be take away x. Do you see what I've done so far? If you want, you can put a little... Um, yeah, this is not necessary, but you can put a subheading over each one to remind you what on earth is going on. These are all of the even multiples of pi, and these are all the odd ones. So I've got two cases. Right, now that I have my cases set up, I'm ready to solve these things, right? Let's take it one at a time and simplify as far as we can. Over here, what would you like me to do? Take the x to Yeah, I can collect like terms now that I don't have this weirdo switching factor in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to subtract x from both sides, leaving me with that. And now what would you like me to do? Divide Divide through, cool. So 2 over 4 becomes n pi, n pi on 2. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to put that to one side and now I'm going to think about this other side of the equation. Okay? In this case, because I've got a negative, a minus x rather, on the right hand side, I'm going to add x to both sides, which leaves me with this. Yeah? And now I just divide through to make x the subject. Yeah? Okay, now. Is this right? How would we know? Okay. Before we establish that um, this, this is actually the solution, okay, I'm going to do something which seems like it's a little bit backwards. Like, isn't this the point to avoid doing this? But it's actually going to be really helpful for us. This stands for every multiple of pi divided by 2. Right? What are those values? What are those actual values? If I put in numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the first solution, of course, would be 0. Because right? n equals 0 is where I begin at the origin, right? When I put in x equals 1, you're going to get pi on 2. When you put in n equals 2, you're going to get pi, then 3 pi on 2, then 2 pi, and so on. Yes? So this is the sequence of solutions that I'm generating. And of course, it also, I really should have dots at the beginning because they go off into the negatives as well. Okay? 
So here's all the solutions that I get from here. What about these solutions that come from this guy, right? Well, x is going to be equal to the 2n plus 1 on the top. What kinds of numbers does that give me again? It gives me all the odd numbers, right? So the very first one, I put n equals 0 in here, the very first solution I'm going to get from this guy dot, 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 is the first odd number on 6, right? The first odd number of pi on 6. What's the next odd number? It's 3. So it's 3 pi on 6, which is pi on 2. Okay, now just pause for a second. I have a solution, and it's in this list as well as in this list. Is that a problem for me? Yes. Isn't it? I'll let you have a think about it for a second. We'll yes. resolve this answer in a moment. What's the next solution? This was um, 1 pi on 6. This is 3 pi on 6. The next one will be 5, five pi on 6. And it starts to get a little bit repetitive after that, right? 7 pi on 6. The next one would be 9 pi on 6, which is also in my list, right? Yes. Dot, dot, dot. OK. Actually, mm, let's do another one. Let's do another one. Um, that was 9 pi on 6. What's the next one? 11 pi on 6. OK, now I'm going to stop. OK, now here's the reason why I'm pausing at this spot. How many <laughs> solutions do you count on the board? One. One, two, three, four, five, six. six. Seven. That one I've got. Seven, eight. That one I've got. Nine. Nine. That's a heck of a lot of solutions. Why do you think I chose to stop at eleven pi on six? What's special about that guy? It's the last one. It's it's the last one in my <coughs> regular. Like I always see this all the time. Domain of naught to two pi. Nine solutions from naught to two pi. Does that mesh with what I was expecting? What I predicted? No. Let's get a picture, shall we? Should have done this before. What? How many solutions are you predicting? I want you to go right back to the original line that defined this question, right? And I want you to pose the question to yourself. Here it is. Here it is in black, right? What would that look like? What would that look like? Well, I will show you. Mm -hmm. Assume n was odd, you're talking about, yeah? So in the power, like, yeah. yeah, so just like if you want it to say it's odd, then just put like a negative sign in front of the n at the front. Because I might as well just deal with the form of this general solution, which is about the odd values. Right? So that wouldn't work. Correct. All right, so here's my picture. Ready? And hopefully we'll be able to unfurl your confusion and get a picture. All right. So, just pause for a moment. Is that, let me make it a little easier for you to read. Is that what you expected? Is that what you expected? Let me zoom in a little more so that it's a bit more helpful for you. Okay, here's the domain that I'm so very used to. Not 2 pi, right? I know we don't have multiples of pi on our axis, that's because it's just the units. But what is 2 pi anyway? 2 pi is 6.28-ish, 6, 6.28-ish, six. 6. okay? So here's my one full cycle of regular sine x, right? That blue guy there is sine 5x. Of course he's sine 5x, because how many copies are there from 0 to 2 pi? Five. Answer, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I can still count, I get to keep my job, okay? So what were we getting here? How many times do sine x and sine 5x intersect? Okay. Now, just a second ago, I'm not going to show you because you've got this listed. We listed out nine solutions, right? Well, let's have a look, shall we? Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, I count. Let me do, if I can aim. One, x equals zero. That was the first solution you counted, right? Two, three, four, five, and if I can aim, five, six, Seven, eight, and I don't think I've written the last one because I forgot x equals 11 pi on 6. Ah, it's the wrong color. Sorry, OCD. Ha, ah, beautiful. Okay, so... Nine. Nine solutions. Of course nine solutions. Because sine 5x is so periodic, he collides with regular or peaceful sine x that many times. Okay? So you're missing 
Am I missing a solution? Which one am I missing? Just the one at the intersection of the two pi. What? Oh, two pi. Well, yeah. Okay. So, all right. You can use your magic. So this is is this eight then? Yeah. So there's number nine. Okay. So. Does it make sense? Do you see how we went through and used the regular general solutions and it gets out like you and your finding two solutions in your people, feeble naught to two pi. You can find as many solutions as you like. That's the whole strength of general solution. He doesn't care how many you've got. He'll just get all of them. I could just keep on going dot, 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 dot and get the rest of those. Make sense? Okay. Now, by the way, just as a, a bit of homework, I didn't resolve the fact that Two of these solutions came up twice. Hmm. I'll let you have a think about that. Why would they come up twice and only those ones? Two? 